I'll show you how useful pattern layers can be for an architecture workflow that involves texturing plans and diagrams. I have this basic floor plan, and I want to add a floor texture to this area here. First, I'll go out to my file browser and find this seamless wood texture. Then, I'll click drag it into Affinity Photo and release the mouse button over the top toolbar. This opens the wood texture as a separate document. Now, an easy way to make this texture repeatable is to convert it to a pattern layer, which I can do by going to Layer, New Pattern Layer from Selection. This also retains the original layer, which I can now delete. If I select the Move tool with V on the keyboard, I can now scale this pattern layer down, and we'll see it repeats infinitely across the bounds of the document. I can now copy this pattern layer using Command C on Mac, Control C on Windows. Then I'll go back to my floor plan document and paste it in with Command V on Mac, Control V on Windows. Now I need to mask this pattern layer to a particular area of the floor plan. Rather than having to hide and show this pattern layer so I can see the plan underneath it, I can instead Option click on Mac, Alt click on Windows on the background layer, which is the plan or diagram, to solo it. I can then choose the Flood Select tool from the Tools panel on the left, and on the Context toolbar, I'll enable Anti-Alias, which will soften the edges of the selection. I'll then single-click over the area I wish to select, and we'll now see a marquee selection. I can then select the Pattern layer on the Layers panel. This also exits Solo mode. I'll add a mask layer using this option down here. Then I'll deselect with Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. I now have a masked pattern layer I can transform. To begin transforming, I'll use V to select the Move tool, and I'll make sure I have the parent pattern layer selected and not the mask. Now, if I start trying to move and scale the pattern layer, the mask will move and scale with it. I'll undo with Command Z on Mac, Control Z on Windows. Then on the Context toolbar, I'll enable Lock Children. This locks child layers in place, including the mask layer. So I can now scale and transform the pattern layer freely. Whilst rotating, you can hold Shift to constrain the rotation to 15 degree increments. One benefit of using pattern layers is that you have precise control over scaling. When you have the Move tool active and a layer selected, the Transform panel in the bottom right will read out the X and Y coordinates, and also the width and height. For pattern layers, this corresponds to a single pattern tile. So, for example, if I knew that each pattern tile needed to be 60 millimeters wide and tall, I could link the two width and height values here, then enter 60 into one of the input fields and use return to scale the pattern layer accordingly. You can also do measurement unit conversions. So for example, this document is currently in millimeters, but if I was given the tile measurement in inches, I could type a value followed by IN and use return, and it would be converted to millimeters. At this point, I may want to add another area to the mask so the pattern displays in the bedroom as well. To do this, I'll first expand the pattern layer and select the mask. Then I'll switch back to the Flood Select tool. Now, this is a useful feature. Rather than having to manually select the background layer to make my selection from the diagram, I can instead change the source option up here to all layers, then click to make the selection. This will composite all the layer information in the layer stack, allowing me to create a selection from the diagram information, even though I don't have that specific layer selected. Because I have the mask selected, all I need to do now is go to Edit, Fill, and Fill with White. This is because white adds to a mask, whilst black subtracts from it. Then, I can deselect. We may then want to perform some additional retouching to this floor texture. One technique we could use is non-destructive dodging and burning. To achieve this, I'll create an empty pixel layer 
using this option on the Layers panel. Then I'll click drag and clip it inside the pattern layer by offering it to the layer text. And I'll set this pixel layers blend mode to overlay. Now I'll select the paintbrush tool using B. The default brush you begin with is a basic round brush with 80% hardness. And so all you would need to do here is reduce the hardness to 0% for a softer edge. If however you've been using other brushes, you can easily get back to a suitable round brush by going to the brushes panel and looking in the masking category. I'll choose this large soft round brush as an example. Now I can click drag and brush away around all the walls to add some shading to this texture. The effect is too strong at the moment, but I'll fix that shortly. Once I'm finished brushing, I can avoid accidentally doing any further brush strokes by using H to switch to the view tool. I'll move back to the layers panel and we can see the pixel layer with the brushwork on it. Reducing the layer's opacity will allow us to control the strength of the shading effect. You can also change the opacity of the currently selected layer using number keys on the keyboard. For example, I could type 6 for 60% opacity, or I could type 4 5 in quick succession for 45%. Another technique I can experiment with is adding a layer effect. I'll select the parent pattern layer. Then I'll go to Window, Quick Effects, to bring up the Quick Effects panel on the right. I'll enable Outer Shadow and bring the radius slider up. This blends a soft contouring effect to the edge detail. I can easily toggle this on and off so it remains fully non destructive. Finally, I can also control the overall tone of the pattern with adjustment layers. As an example, I'll add a brightness contrast adjustment and I'll clip it into the pattern layer once again by dragging it over the text area. Now I can modify both brightness and contrast until I end up with a suitable result. A final tip then, if you are finding that such an adjustment is also affecting the color intensity too much, you can change the adjustment layer's blend mode to luminosity. This will help modify the luminosity of the layer without significantly altering the saturation of the color detail. And there we go. That was a look at using pattern layers for architectural workflows. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.